All right, we're at two minutes. Let's get started. Welcome, everyone, to another CIO Fireside Chat with Green Pages. We will be answering your questions uh, throughout the session for those submitting through the Q&A box. You know, public cloud costs uh, can be a significant expense for organizations that rely on cloud computing services. Public cloud providers typically charge for their services based on usage, which means can quickly add up if usage is not closely monitored or managed. To manage public cloud costs, organizations first uh, assess their usage patterns and identify areas where they can optimize their usage. This may involve identifying underutilized resources, shutting them down, or using cost-saving measures like reserved instances, spot instances, or implementing automation tools to, automize, to optimize uh, resource allocation. GreenPages believes that customers should review their cloud usage and costs to identify trends and adjust their usage accordingly. But how do you do that? What if there was a white glove service that could impact that spend by as much as 30%? Well, that's why we're here today. Please welcome to our CIO Fireside Chat, our panelists today, Tony and Morris. Tony Morris, welcome. Thank you. Morris, tell us a little bit about yourself, sir. Uh I'm Morris Kane. I'm the Chief Technology Officer with Retail Control Systems. Uh, we're a point of sale solution provider and uh, host a lot of our customers in the cloud for their retail technology and point of sale solutions. Very good. Thank you for joining us. Tony Perfilio. Yes, my name is Tony Perfilio. I am the uh, CSP Program Director here at Green Pages and actually pretty excited to be here with Morris, um, one of our uh, uh, longest and uh, most mature cloud consumption customers. Very good. Well, thank you both again. Uh, this question uh, for you, Morris. So what factors led to the decision to move from on-prem or co-located services to the public cloud? Uh, there were several things that kind of drove that, that process and decision-making. Um, first was we were looking at, um, at our Tolo facility. We had We've been hosting customers for about 15 years when we started looking at the cloud migration. Uh, we had some hardware that was reaching the kind of end of the hardware life cycle for us. We we're going to need to make some capital expenditures there. We wanted to explore other options before kind of investing that capital in. Um, we also have, since we host for customers all over the country, we wanted to look for options that would allow us to have different points of presence so that we could be closer to where customer stores are physically located. Um, and then we also uh, were looking for just, you know, ways to invest in a new technology. And then we had customers and prospects that were coming to us asking about cloud hosting. So hmm. those things kind of contributed us to investigating and looking into and seeing did cloud make sense for us from a, you know, service delivery standpoint. Sure. Yeah. Mar Mario, I'd like to also think of, you know, just bolting on to the comments that uh, Morris, you know, having been part of that decision making process back in 2019, I believe it was, you know, a lot of our customers do similar type of analysis in which, you know, quality, speed and price, uh, a lot of those attributes uh, can be uh, improved upon by going to public cloud versus uh, some of the limitations of a uh, on-prem data center. Hmm. Yeah. Morris, how did you arrive at the notion that uh, going to the cloud was the best decision? Uh, so we spent a lot of time uh, working with the Green Pages team and went through a lot of financial uh, kind of different workshops, different uh, business models. But we went through easily dozens, possibly hundreds of models of not just how does going to the cloud work, but, you know, which cloud provider is the right one for us and how does that make sense? And then kind of translating those models into how does that fit into our financial model, right? So just before as a business, before we can take the step off into going to the cloud, we've got to understand what is that expenditure going to look like? How does it compare to what we've been doing? What are the pros, cons, even from a technology standpoint, but also from a financial piece, right? If it's, if moving to the cloud is great, but it's going to cost us 10 times what we pay now, it's probably not a realistic option for us. And we were able to kind of go through with the, uh, financial models that Green Pages was able to provide and apply those into our business model to see how do we make this an economical move for us? How do we make money move into the cloud and control our cost once we're there? Uh, it was really 
you know, the technology piece was the easy piece. How do we do it? But the financial piece, making it work, fitting it into budgets and uh, making it a viable business option. That's honestly where the vast majority of our time was spent. Very good. Very yeah. good. Mario, you know, I think uh, uh, Morse was um, actually a very early on contributor to some of the tools development, right? We have a very uh, mature FinOps framework and part of that framework includes the tools that we've developed over the past five years. We have chosen to subscribe to. Um, Morris was a big fan of what we were doing early on in 2019 and building out um, uh, cloud estimate tools that were tied into AWS price books, Azure price books, in which we could actually do some projections of different configurations of what his current on-prem as it stood today, what it would look like in Azure or AWS or GCP. And uh, we even took it one step further is what would it look like on a day two standpoint, which is let's go ahead and start doing some one year and three year reservation commitments against the environment. And um, uh, Morris already had a vision, you know, exercising our tools and encouraging us to make them better, had a vision of what his uh, future state would be well before he rolled his first virtual machine into action. Interesting. I mean, great story. Hey, team, do you mind uh, putting up the first uh, poll question uh, for the audience? And essentially the question is, if you're moving to the cloud, um, what is, um, uh, what's your largest concern? And uh, it'll be interesting to see what the audience uh, uh, will come back with. But in any case, Morris, back to you. So did it help that Green Pages had the experience doing migrations from on-prem to the cloud? and provide you with at least a level of comfort uh, to make that move? Yeah, it did. Um, RCS is very fortunate. We've got a, a very knowledgeable and experienced team of engineers on staff, uh, but we didn't have experience in the cloud. We were able to, we wanted to take the work on ourselves. We felt like it was for our business model, the right thing to do. So our, our team had the experience and knowledge of doing it, but we did a lot of work um, with the Green Pages team and just kind of brainstorming with them, is this the right way? A lot of validation. Mm. Right? This is our plan. Does this plan make sense? Are we missing anything? Are there kind of unknowns because we haven't done this in the cloud before? And it was great to have that group of people that we knew if we ran into a problem, we could fall back and we could call and say, hey, we've run into this challenge or this problem. Can you guys jump in and help us? Um, and it, it's really worked out well. Yeah, Mario, that, um, those sentiments, right? We, um, uh, you know, supporting hundreds of cloud customers uh, similar to Morris, uh, that's a common theme where um, a lot of our customers have interest and in kind of having tribal knowledge associated with the, the build of the environment, because they're going to be responsible for a day two um, care and feeding and maintenance of that environment. So um, Morris is, you know, pretty clear when, when, um, uh, we first discussed, you know, how can Green Pages support you from a professional services engineering standpoint? He says, uh, just keep be there for me and right. um, want my guys to uh, live this and deploy this. Now, a lot of our other customers, unlike Morris, and we've got a lot of customers like Morris, uh, have gaps, have gaps within their engineering team, in which Green Pages can either fill those gaps or actually um actually deliver a, a, a whole experience, right? A net new cloud experience. Yeah, very good. By the way, the poll question um, was that 45% of uh, our audience was concerned at cost and the second was security. So um, uh, I'm sure that uh, that resonates with, uh, with you, Morris, as well. Um, how important was it for GreenPage to help you to visualize your estimated cloud spend, Morris? Yeah. I don't think I could have gone to cloud without having that understanding of what the cloud spend was going to look like. Um, I, I can't overstate the importance of the modeling tools that were built, um, the ones that the Green Page was able to provide, and we took some of those off and kind of modified them internally and, and still use them internally uh, to look at if we're getting a new customer or we're offering a new product or we're making changes to the environment, what are the financial implications going to be? Are we able to provide this service at a you know price that's going to fit in the market space for us and, and allow us to make you know be profitable on that project or on that product? And so 
you know, for me, the whole business model, we can't, if we don't understand our costs, we can't be successful in what we're going to do. And without those models, we would not be able to understand our cost to the degree and accuracy that we do now. Yeah, Mario, it was, it was a lot of fun to work with uh, uh, Morris and is to this day, because I would like to think a lot of customers who, you know, may go to the cloud and uh, Morris had a great moment in time where, you know, after a bit of a forklift move, right, and kind of having uh, constructed his environment to be very t-shirt sized and orientation. Um, modernization can also be termed transformation, right? You have opportunities to modernize your licensing, your reservation uh, cadence uh, associated with your environment to compress the spend. You can start to think about transforming from managed uh, instances, you know, virtual machines to container-based. And uh, our projection tools, the tools that we've developed, allow you to rapidly do multiple what if. And uh, again, Morris was uh, uh, instrumental in helping us develop those tools and bring them to the level of maturity they are today. Yeah, yeah that, perfect. Yeah. yeah Morris, that, thank, you for, thank you for taking us on your journey, by the way. Yeah, that was, thank you guys. It was that projection that allowed us to do this. Most people I talk to, they go to the cloud and they find out you know, a month, two months, three months later, what things are costing them because the billing is not always real time. And these financial models allowed us to see what was going to happen if we did X or if we did Y. And still today, if we make a change in our environment or thinking about making a change, we know what those cost impacts are going to be uh, to a very high degree of certainty before we make the change. Yep. And so that's uh, that's critical for success for the cloud, in my opinion. Excellent. Hey team, can we put up uh, our last uh, poll question? So the uh, for for you, Morris and uh, Tony, you guys aren't seeing this, but when it comes to cloud uh, service providers, do you take a, a DYI or managed or a managed approach? And uh, while the audience uh, goes through that, let's uh, you know how did Green Pages? To you, Morris, how did Green Pages, and we don't mean to pick on you today, but you know, you were gonna pick on you. Uh, how did Green Pages and your internal IT department work together on the resulting cloud migration? Yeah, our, our teams already had a good working relationship. We had worked with um, your managed services team before uh, we worked with your professional services team. And so really uh, more than anything, we use you guys as a sounding board to come through and look, these are the things that we're looking at. Um, this is what we want to do. Does it make sense? A lot of validation before we put the time into actually rolling things into proof of concept um, or pilot program. And so we were able to leverage your experience through conversations and you know get a lot of best practices from your team uh, without having to go through the pains of learning the lessons ourselves. <laughs> uh, so really just worked as a partnership between the two groups and two teams to say, this is what we're doing. This is what we're thinking of does this make sense? And you guys would jump in and say, no, you're off course here, or you may want to think about the ramifications. If you do this now, then you're going to have this impact in six months or a year. And this is what it's really going to look like. You'd be better off spending some time and energy here. Um, and really a lot of uh, assistance as well as not just in, in the cloud piece, but also around licensing. You guys were extremely helpful for us on understanding the different license models available, what the cost implications were, and how we can choose the best license models for our business to, uh, for us to make sense. Hmm. So, yeah. Very good. Yeah. Mario, I'd like to think in, in your aware as well as Morris, you know, I think our, our regular cadence with the uh, RCS game, right, retail control system team, we have a, uh, a monthly cloud business review. Now we conduct that cloud business review monthly with Morris, but also with hundreds of other customers. So when he he makes the comment of, hey, we, we don't want to be the first one to stub our toe, right? <laughs> we have the opportunity to talk to a lot of, a lot of other customers may have already made that you know, toe stubbing, you know, stubbing moment, right? And we share those moments with other customers to make sure they don't make those those same mistakes. So if anything, uh, even a partner a partnership with a best in class CSP is going to get a great peer review, especially if they're really into uh, the cloud and can, can give you some significant recommendations based on the learning moments that yeah. we've with other customers. 
Nice. Uh, I love that. Uh, by the way, the answer was about 93% the hybrid. So it's sort of a culmination of, uh, of this. But Tony, back to your question or back to your answer, because I want to expand on that, which is, you know, how do we start to optimize uh, Morris's cloud spend, at least in the first year? You know, walk us through a brief history of, uh, of that journey so folks understand what that was like. That was for you, Tony. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. First, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, optimization is probably um, one of the strongest, uh, strongest type of service offerings that we have to offer. Again, having worked with hundreds of customers, uh, our optimization practice actually has a, a regular cadence associated with it. And that cadence is um, termed an um, optimization sweep. And we can conduct these sweeps across um, AWS, Azure, GCP, uh, because the fundamentals are the same, right? Identifying waste, eliminating waste, um, uh, scheduling resources, right-sizing resources, uh, placing commitments on our cloud provider friends, one, one in three-year commitments that give you significant discounts, and then also giving guidance around transformation, right? Transforming from managed instances over to something as a service, right? Or container-based computing. We by far stand pretty proudly, you mentioned it at the outset of this uh, uh, session, Mario, 30% savings is something that we consistently deliver to all of our customers in many cases, if they, uh, 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 prior to working with us, that 30% savings is something through that cadence, optimization suite cadence, we've been very successful in doing. And uh, I know Morris has a good story um, in which he's probably consuming twice the amount of resources that he was um, when he was on demand and actually paying half the price. So that compression and using those techniques to optimize your environment can be done, but it needs to be performed by, you know, a FinOps practitioner that um, understands all the levers that can be pulled. Yeah, Morris, your perspective, sir. Yeah, so the monthly business reviews are, are great because it's something that we wouldn't be doing without that service, right? It's going to fall on somebody on the team, whether it was me or somebody else on the RCS team that wouldn't have the knowledge or expertise to walk through it. And quite honestly, probably wouldn't have the time to walk through it. So we have a 30 minute meeting to go over what was probably hours and hours of research of all of our bills, our utilization and different areas where we can optimize our cloud spend but even beyond that, those meetings are more beneficial than just from the spend and savings pieces. It's also a look to the future. What are we planning for the next three months, six months, 12 months? What new customers do we have coming on board? And what new technologies have we done? So the, you know, the first step of our cloud migration was kind of bringing in, you know, for moving from data center into virtual machines into the cloud. And since then, we've expanded in, in the other areas of the cloud to offer into, you know, a development of features that we can offer to our cloud hosted customers, utilizing communication platforms, utilizing uh, just different features within the cloud that we can take advantage of, insights, monitoring, different tools that are there to more effectively run our environment, automation that's there. There's just a whole lot. It opened up a lot more doors for us to continually improve. And that's part of what we do in those monthly meetings is to look at, you know, what's the new technology? What are new offerings from the cloud providers? How can they help us and assist us? And your team really understands our business model. So when there's something that comes out that seems like it'd be a good fit for us, even before it hits, we're told, hey, these new features are expected to be coming out in the next few months. How does this, you know, how does this work into your future plans? Sure. And so it's, it's just, it, to me, it's even more than just a financial piece. It's the whole helping us navigate our way through cloud without having to do hours and hours of research from our side to see what are the new features and how will that, how potentially benefit us and our customers. Yeah, I just have one more follow-up comment. No, uh, go for it. It, yeah, I touched on a couple of things. Uh, the, the first, uh, big well, the last thing being the cloud business reviews, we've invested a lot of calories in making that valuable to our customers. And uh, I like to think, you know, hearing from somebody like Morris, who's very astute and his whole team is very astute when it comes to cloud, the fact that, you know, they're gaining some value from it, right? There's going to be that one little thing that's shared within a cloud business review. But the second thing 
that muscle memory around uh, managing reservations. And uh, our, our friend Morris and his team have hundreds of them, hundreds of reservation commitments, uh, subscription commitments around Windows Server, uh, same thing for SQL Server, in which it can be, uh, we have muscle memory because we're managing that mm -hmm. type of uh, uh, attributes of the cloud every day, right? We're subject matter experts. To ask a very talented application engineer to do that once a month to make sure that all that reservation <laughs> uh, commitment is fully utilized is not a good use of his time. <laughs> right. of he's probably not going to be that good at it, right? So right. we look to think that if anything, we're filling some nice gaps, right, for a very short money, um, making sure that your your commitments on uh, uh, AWS or Azure or GCP are uh, utilized. Yep. So along with our monthly reviews, uh, Morris, you know, how do you maintain that optimized spend month over month uh, with uh, with Tony's team and our uh, Green Pages FinOps uh, capabilities? So from those monthly reviews, we typically will have action items to come back and look at. And some of the things that we've been able to do is kind of right size VMs. So we came out of the gate, we would have rather been, you know, overpowered than underpowered. So you know, monitoring, looking at what we're doing, understanding the reserved instances and being able to resize within the same family of VM. Uh, same thing with like hard drives where, you know, came in at premium SSDs, we're able to lower certain server classes to standard SSDs. But really beyond that, it's also things like um, one of the engineers will be working on a project and leave an unassociated hard drive sitting out there. And you know, it's costing a couple hundred bucks a month and your team will pick up on that and say, hey, you've got this hard drive not associated to anything. It's not in use. Do you still need it? Sometimes it's legitimate. It's something that's, you know, backup data or reporting data that, yeah, we, we've got it off. It needs to be archived and held for a few months. So we're keeping it here. But it's kind of that mutual understanding or somebody spun up a test environment and left it up there. It's been there for three weeks, not used. Hey, do you guys still need this? Um, so there's... You know, a lot of aspects that get looked at that in the day to day of the people's everyday job, you know, they're already full. They've already got 40 plus hour work week. Having somebody else kind of come in behind us and do validation and make suggestions of how to clean up and improve has, has been extremely valuable for us. Very nice. So, Mario, a lot of that optimization, uh, you know, day two maintenance and care and feeding and identifying opportunities. So we're kind of left here at Green Pages, right? We've um, we've actually got some pretty formidable tools. So on a people processes and tools framework, which is very mature, we've got talented people. And, you know, Morris uh, commented on the fact that we using our Cloud Lighthouse tool and Cloud Checker with that. Cloud Checker is actually a uh, uh, Gartner Magic Quadrant leading tool that actually barks out very uh, succinct uh, cost savings recommendation by machine. It's very um, detailed in nature. And uh, part of the relationship that we got with RCS as well as all of our CSP customers, that tool is readily available for our customers to either sell their and uh, in combination with our Cloud Lighthouse tool, which is a, uh, a usage analysis tool, right, and an anomaly detection tool. Mm -hmm. um, if you have an appetite to use the tool, terrific, and DIY. If you don't, we're going to bring to bear optimization specialists that know how to use that tool intimately, run it before your cloud business review, and as Morris had mentioned, we're going to come, come out with some very specific recommendations where you can save money. Very good. And the Lighthouse tool is fantastic. It's it's the, the tool you guys have developed. It is far and superior to anything I've seen from other providers and, and much better, in my opinion, than Cloud Checker or the other tools out there. Uh -huh. You can get high level, you can get historical data, and then you can also get as granular as you want on the data. And for someone like us, we have lots of different subscriptions, lots of different um, utilization and usage cases that we do in the cloud. And it can even get dissimilar items where we're looking to see what the cost is and how they impact. The, the Lighthouse tool is really the a big driving piece for us that helped us be successful as well. Yeah, fantastic. By the way, we don't often see Tony smile, but uh, that was a big grin on his face when you when you mentioned uh, a Lighthouse tool. Um, so before we depart, uh, I'll leave it to you first, uh, Tony, any final thoughts? And then I'll go to Morris and then we'll close out the session. But um, First and foremost, thank you for doing this today. But Tony, any 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 parting thoughts, sir? 
Yeah, I think I, I, I'm uh, I'm appreciative of everybody that joined this call. I think um, uh, Retail Control Systems by far has, uh, in a true partnership way, and that's that's a way we'd like to think of our customers. They're going to help us be a better CSP. We're going to help them be a better, you know, uh, cloud consumer. And that feeds upon itself when we um, uh, run very transparently with our customers, which is basically, hey, don't, don't have the answer to your question today. But boy, we are uh, well skilled and have a, uh, um, a suite of partners that can help get us the answer. And those partners include Microsoft, mm -hmm. Amazon, GCP, all big fans of Green Pages, where we can help customers like RCS. But again, in, in them asking those questions, we've become a uh, best in the country CSP. Yep, perfect. Thank you, Tony. Morris, any final thoughts, sir? Yeah, um, for people out there that are kind of considering making the switch in this move, uh, a few things. So first, we're now 100% in the cloud. We don't have anything on-prem anywhere in our company anymore. And I would say it's one of the best decisions I've ever made from a work standpoint. But I can also remember the nerves and the um, fear, confusion, and you know, trying to digest all of this information out there. And we talked to, aside from Green Pages, several other companies to, about cloud migration and um, how to get to the cloud, the best strategies. And the tools that Green Pages had, nobody had anything even remotely close to what was available to let us make those financial models to do this well and do it successfully. I don't think RCS, I know RCS would not be where we are in our cloud progress right now um, if it wasn't for the partnership with Green Pages and the tools that, that you guys made available to us to make this conversion and make this migration a huge success. Uh, Very good. So we're about Excellent. three years in now, and it's been, like I said, one of the best things we've done from a business standpoint. I wish we would have done it sooner. Very good. Very kind words from you, Morris. Uh, we appreciate you. There you go, folks. Uh, I hope this was informative. Uh, we try to make these, uh, you know, short so you can enjoy your lunch while you're listening to uh, experts in the field. Um, please keep an eye out for a survey. We'd love to hear uh, your feedback on this session, as well as any other topics that you'd like to address during these sessions in the future. Uh, we have another one coming up uh, on August 24th. Uh, and uh, we appreciate you. Thank you so much for listening and uh, have a great day and stay safe and healthy. Take care. Mario. Thank you. Thank you.